It sounds like it was in like the, the pioneer days, you know. I'm imagining John Hall marching across the Wild West in his little handkerchief with all his belongings and his beer stuff in it. Hi guys, it's Jim here from Dr. Tankenstein with another episode of Beers in the British Isles. On today's episode, we are drinking Matilda. This is a rustic, old world, Belgian style pale ale from Goose Island. Now those of you out there who've been to Belgium will know just how specific uh, that description is. Um, there are loads of Belgian style ales, obviously, but I think if you describe something as a Belgian style, typically what you mean is it's sort of, it's not particularly hoppy, not particularly bitter, maybe even a little bit sweet and probably a little bit boozy. That's my interpretation of it. We'll find out later how right I was about that. Um, so this beer, Matilda, is 7% ABV. Uh, like I say, it's from Goose Island. It has 26 IBUs, so that's pretty lightly bittered uh, for 7% beer, which kind of fits in, maybe it's gonna have quite a lot of residual sweetness, kind of fits in with that Belgian style that I was talking about earlier. Now that being said, even though it is only 26 IBUs, uh, Goose Island, being an American brewery, have still managed to squeeze in three hops into that 26 IBUs. So here we have uh, Millennium, we have Sartes, and we have Celia, is it pronounced Celia? 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 I'm gonna say Celia. Uh, so these are kind of, they're not all noble hops, I, I don't think, but they're all sort of of that ilk. They're all kind of spicy, floral, earthy hops. So they're not gonna give that really punchy uh, hop aroma flavor that you might expect from other Goose Island beers, and very much particularly other pale ales. Now the malt bill is where you kinda wanna focus a little bit more attention on this. Um, so in here we have two row, we have uh, C20, so kind of a, a light crystal malt uh, for that little bit of sweetness, I guess. Um, we have debittered black malt, which is the first time I've actually ever come across this. Um, yeah, debittered black malt. I guess it's just black malt that isn't as astringent. Uh, so I suppose what they're going for here is to add a little bit of color um, without adding astringency. Uh, and they also have evaporated cane juice. Uh, so for a layman like you and me, I guess that's sugar, right? Evaporated cane juice has got to just be sugar. Uh, but again, that's really, really in fitting with the Belgian styles because um, these Belgian ales can get so, so boozy. They don't want a load of body in there. So that, so they chuck sugar in there just to, to increase the alcohol a little bit and not add anything to the body. So again, it's kind of is fitting in with this Belgian style that they keep talking about. Or that I keep talking about rather. Anyway, someone's talking about it. Uh, now all those malts combine to give you the color that they proudly describe as golden sunrise. It's very specific. If you thought their description of a Belgian style pale ale was specific, my God is their color description specific. Uh, golden sunrise, I guess we'll find out once we crack it open. Um, I mean, I've, I'm pretty excited about this. A whole sunrise in a bottle. Now the real main event here in this beer, this Belgian style pale ale from Goose Island that I've been building up to you, is Britannomyces. It's proudly here on the front of the bottle, brewed with Britannomyces, or fermented with Britannomyces, should I say. Britannomyces is, um, I guess it's Greek for British yeast or British fungus, uh, whatever it is. Um, and. The, it's, it's thought to be responsible for that kind of sour edge that sort of stouts and cask ales can sometimes have. Um, now, if you just ferment 
with Britannomyces. Uh, you get a lot of, um, let's say, spoiled flavors, or, or what a kind of what you think of as spoiled flavors. So, sort of um, barnyardy, farmy, as uh, as my uh, fiance would put it. Um, horsey, even fecal. Uh, you know, this stuff, this Britannomyces that they've thrown in here, um, if you just read the spec sheet of it, doesn't sound that great. Uh, but trust me, some people do like it. And if you don't think you're gonna like it, fear not, because right on their website, right there in big letters, when describing the flavor of this beer, Goose Island reassure everyone that there's actually not that much Britannomyces flavor in it. Despite, putting it on the front of the bottle in big letters. Yeah, so they don't think that this tastes like Britannomyces at all. I don't know whether that's them covering their back after they made it and it wasn't uh, that bretty, uh, but they've reassured everyone there anyway. So we got a Belgian style pale ale. We've got maybe Britannomyces, maybe not. We've got de-bittered black malt. We've got golden sunrise. We've got a hell of a lot to look forward to. Let's just open this thing up and see what it's like. Okay, we're in the glass. We're ready to dive in to this taste of Belgium. Uh, now, first thing is I have to address the color because I took the piss out of it so much earlier. Golden sunrise. Um, I mean, I think they've been sneaky here because nobody really knows what Golden Sunrise is, so it has to be true that that's what it is. Um, but it is actually, it is golden, but like you say, it does kind of have a reddish hue to it. Um, I was a bit gutted when I saw it coming out because, you know what, I can see where they're coming from on that. Would I have ever used those two words if not for that? No, but these guys did and they're entitled to, so that's what it looks like. Uh, the head's pretty good. Um, the head poured very thick. Um, it was a very lively pour, uh, this one. So the head's pretty great. And I don't know if I'm, I'm imagining it, but it has a slight off-white color, does the head. Uh, I'm not sure if that means anything at all, uh, but we've got golden sunrise by default in the glass and slightly off-white fluffy head on top there. So let's have a, let's have a sniff, okay. So I already said earlier that Belgian style ales, that very descriptive term, um, don't typically have a lot of hop, uh, anything really, hop bitterness, hop flavor, hop aroma. So typically it's not there. So we're not looking for that here. What we're looking for here is any kind of yeast character, uh, particularly uh, those Brett characteristics, Britannomyces characteristics, um, that's what the cool kids call it, Brett, uh, that I mentioned. And you do kind of get that, that sort of um, farmy, slightly funky flavor. I've described it before. Um, it's definitely not fecal. Don't, don't worry about that. Um, and I wouldn't say it's horsey kind of straw or band-aid. It's very subtly um, kind of, be careful what I say here. It's very slightly vomity. So it's not vomit, but it's, almost there, but it's not very strong anyway. You really have to look for it. And I don't think anybody else sniffs their beers before they drink them anyway, so I think I'm the only one doing that. All right, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna dive in. Yeah, it's not bad, it is very complex for sure. Um, so the, fir the first thing uh, with this that was always going to be with this, I knew it when I opened the bottle, is the carbonation. The carbonation hits you right up front, but it's kind of nice because it's so complex, it allows the beer to then wash through your mouth a little bit. So the, the, the aftertaste, if I can say that, that I've got kind of swirling around in there is a kind of bitter edge. Now, I'm not sure if that is bitterness, I think where that's coming from is the, um, my old pal Brett there. Um, like I say, it's not super, it's not super bretty. It's not like sour or, or anything really. Um, but there is that edge to it. Um, and it lingers in it and it sticks in there. 
but you don't really notice it at first. And I think the reason that you don't really notice it is because the, the maybe not the malt bill, but the malt flavor is very Belgian in its kind of, uh, I don't know, in its profile, I guess. You know, here I am now uh, using that catch-all Belgian term. So yes, it has that kind of farmy flavor, very subtly, but more importantly, it doesn't matter how, sour it is it has buckets of sweetness to um to balance it out and and i don't know if that's coming from the um evaporated cane juice that they use um or whether it's coming from the c20 like i said earlier all the two all these things are very sweet uh, and they've balanced it very well here with this 26 ibus i think um if i were to look for some hop flavor I would say it's it's kind of like I said earlier. It's that sort of earthy flavour. It's it's kind of it's very understated, like it sh and so it, so it should be uh, very understated. But there is an unmistakable sort of kind of a a herbaceous uh, hop aroma flavour rather um, to it that just dips in a little bit. Okay, the brewery behind Matilda. Uh, this Belgian style ale uh, with or without Britannomyces, who knows, um, is Goose Island. Goose Island from Chicago, Illinois, uh, founded by a beer lover and traveler, John Hall, um, like I say, in Chicago. Um, so this guy, John Hall, goes and travels around Europe. Uh, he has European beers. I guess maybe he had a few, uh, few pops in Belgium. Uh, comes back to America, decides he wants to bring beer to America. He settles in Chicago, maybe his hometown, I don't know. Um, but apparently Chicago has the largest fresh water system on the planet. Don't know. Uh, that was kind of surprising to me that I would be in Chicago, but I mean, I, I literally know nothing about this, so um, it's probably true. Sells in Chicago, wants to bring beer to America, wants to bring great beer to America. Uh, so he sets up shop, brews some beer, invites some people over, they love it, he loves it, everybody loves it, the rest is history. So as I'm, re I'm reading this story, right, I'm um, uh, prepping for the, for the, the episode, and... Uh, <laughs> And I realized that this is in 1988. This brewery's only a year older than me. It's, and it sounds like, it sounds like it was in like the, the pioneer days. You know, I'm imagining John Hall marching across the wild west in his little handkerchief with all his belongings and his beer stuff in it. Uh, but no, 1988, but, but I guess in a way that was kind of the, the craft beer revolution in America, wasn't it? So. It shouldn't surprise me that it was in 1988, but it kind of did. It kind of took me aback a little bit when I when I read uh, when I read the date there. But anyway, Goose Island, um, big brewery, big big brewery, um, multinational for sure. Um, very famous, very very important, I think, in my uh, beer beer journey. Anyway, so big brewery, big beers, big aspirations. Uh, again, I was kind of kind of laughing to myself as I was reading through the bottom font on the website uh, because there's a little bit on there which is like the about us section and you get about halfway through it and you think am I interviewing this person for a job right now the way they list their big aspirations is sort of like and then we will do this and we'll do this through our innovative it's, it's word is slightly strange for someone who likes to uh, pick out those sort of things um, but no, uh, Goose Island are great. Um, if they're available where you are, if you're in the UK, they certainly are. Go check them out. Um, you probably can't visit them because they're in Chicago, but definitely grab one of the beers. Okay then, let's wrap this up. Let's put Matilda to bed. Uh, I never got to the bottom of the name Matilda. If anyone knows the story of the name um, of Matilda, uh, not just, of this beer, you know, don't be like that. Um, let me know, let me know uh, what the story is there, because it seems like a strange one for a, for a Belgian style ale. 
Uh, but anyway, let's wrap this up. So I've already kind of, you know, accepted defeat on the Golden Sunrise. Golden Sunrise, I guess, has to be the color that this is. It's, it's golden with a slightly red hue, much like a sunrise would be. So perfect. Good, good, um, good use of vocabulary there, uh, Goose Island. So Golden Sunrise. Not hoppy, but it does have a uh, farmhouse. If I say farmhouse, that makes it more palatable, doesn't it? A, a slight farmhouse aroma with, there's almost like a, like a wheat beery kind of, um, like a wheat beery edge to it. So, you know, kind of, they have those sort of, it's not like a banana-y flavor, but more like a, like a wheaty, clovey kind of, Christmas spice sort of flavor, but without being super upfront. Aroma, sorry. Yes, yeah, so now the carbonation's died down a little bit. You can appreciate that a little bit more. So that the sweetness really hits you straight away. Um, the, it is quite full bodied actually, the, the carbonation kind of makes you forget about that. But it is quite full bodied and um, that, that head is there for a reason, you know, it's really, it's, it's providing something. Um, but yeah, very, very nice and sweet. And then afterwards where you would normally get hop aroma, there is kind of those spicy, I mean, obviously the, the hops are kind of floral and, and earthy and, and spicy. Um, but it's not just hops. There is there is a Brett character to it. I, I, it's confusing to me why they say there isn't. Maybe it's just by comparison to other, say, barrel aged beers or or other like heavily bretted beers. Maybe that's why they're saying there isn't uh, any Brett character in it. But there, there definitely is. You can definitely pick it out um, as being that. So the brewery say uh, this is golden sunrise color. It has complex dried fruit and clove flavors um, with low to no Britannomyces <laughs> character. Is that correct? As I rate this beer from naught to 10, I have to ask myself, is that correct? Is that an accurate description? Uh, I think largely it is. Um, except for the Brett character, I'm, I'm a little bit, um, I'm a little bit um, off on that one. Um, it's definitely, in the Belgian style, I guess, um, perhaps slightly too, slightly too bitter in a, in a weird way. Even though it only has 20 IBUs, there's something going on here which is making it um, slightly too bitter on the on the back end. Um, so as I rate this beer from 0 to 10, this Belgian style pale ale, um, I'm going to give it a good a good six. Now the reason the reason I, I do that is because. It's in with some very special company being a Belgian style pale ale. So there is a, a hell of a lot to uh, compare it to. That being said, I think that this would be a really, really good beer to go to if you didn't want a massive sort of, if you didn't want a bottle of wine because some of these Belgian beers are so complex, it's almost almost difficult to drink because there's so much going on. You blink and you miss something, and then the next mouthful is different to the to the the previous one. And so that's why I'm giving it a six. So I'm marking it down because of the rich category, but I'm also marking it up because they've done a pretty good job on this, and it's it's pretty consistent throughout the whole pint. There's well, bottle, um, and it's. It's, it's a pretty good breaded pale ale. So um, head down to Tesco, grab yourself a Matilda, uh, three quid I think it was for a 7% beer um, in the Belgian style, of course. Uh, head down to Tesco, grab one of those. And um, as you sip on your Golden Sunrise Belgian style pale ale Matilda, the mysterious name, um, <laughs> Stick on Send Me On My Way by Rusted Roots. Um, I know Tim Minchin probably watches this. Uh, he's uh, annoyed now that I didn't pick one of his uh, songs from his great musical, Matilda, but 
Uh, could it be anything else? Rusted Roots, uh, Send Me On My Way, uh, is the soundtrack to Matilda, and therefore the soundtrack to this beer. So, um, if you like this beer, guys, if you like beers in the Belgian style, Belgian style pale ale, head down to your local bottle shop, ask them to hold your hand as you walk through the vast array of delicious, amazing, award-winning or worthy beers in the Belgian style or from Belgium, uh, because there is an absolute wealth of stuff there that will blow your mind. Until then, guys, cheers.